So the last video, I covered aquarium co-op's baby brine shrimp eggs. So I've been feeding a lot of brine shrimp. I've got it down to a science. I've been basically doing it every day. I just ran into something that I've never run in before, and it's not good. <laughs> I've seen this before, but i never seen it in person. So if you look here, I got Hydra. This is a lot like a freshwater anemone. Now, to adult fish, it's not going to really bother them. The biggest risk here with hydra is actually to fry and to shrimp. Even full-grown shrimp can be killed by hydra. And I specifically had the green hydra. You can see it here. If we click on green, it looks a lot like this. But you're also going to see a video pop up of what I actually had in my shell dweller tank. Now, I actually had it in two different tanks really, really badly. There was um, my my uh, my Multis tank, my shell dweller tank. I actually thought it was just algae, but it wasn't. When I realized that there's these little hands in there, it kind of freaked out for a second. <laughs> And then it was also in my Scyphia multipunctata, which is my other rare Gadeid. And I know that one of the females in there is about to have babies. Actually, it did have babies today. So I was right to be concerned about the Hydra. In this video, we're going to talk about how I got rid of Hydra, what you need to do. I'm Fish Tank Dave. Let's get right into it. I got this freshwater hydra in my tank. And before we get into that, I have to say, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe on this video. It means a lot. Um, before we get into this video, I'm actually gonna say a big, huge thank you to all the local support I've been getting. I've been selling all of my shrimp. I'm pretty much, I'm officially sold out of my Blue Dream shrimp. I still have a couple cherries left over um, that still need to be sold. I <laughs> sold some sword tails. I mean, last weekend I sold a bunch of things. So if you want to know what I have in stock and what's I am actually selling, there'll be a link down in the description to my uh, Facebook page. It's, it's actually an um, aquatic pet store page. And from there, if you send me a message, we can work out pricing, shipping, all of that stuff. So of all things you would think of, you wouldn't think dog dewormer or goat dewormer when you think of aquarium medicine. But here we are. <laughs> so one of the common things that gets rid of hydra is called fenbendazole. Fenbendazole is commonly used for deworming. Well, here's one right here from Tractor Circle Supply. It does looks like it deworms horses, but a lot of people have figured out what to do for actually using fenbendazole, which is the active ingredient in a lot of safeguard dewormers you can see here there's also you know fenbendazole for for made for pets but you can buy the dog dewormer like i did and what you need to do is you need to take 10 ounces of water and i actually used filtered water to do this um, so i amazon basic scale and i actually measured out 10 ounces of water now you do need a skill to make this happen. You will need to be precise in all your measurements and all that other stuff. And you need to get it to exactly 10 fluid ounces. Then I actually took uh, the small dog size. I think it actually ends up being, it ends up being just like this on the screen here. You can see it is one gram. This is exactly what I bought right here is the Safeguard K90 Wormer. So you take the 10 ounces of water and then you take you take one gram package and pour it into that actual uh, pour it into the actual bottle, and then you mix it up like crazy. And when I say crazy, you want to mix this up as much as possible because this is actually going to be going everywhere. It's going to be you want it to be as smooth as possible. You don't want clumps, all that stuff. And then after you have that, you can get a, you get a container. I used a measuring cup. 
and was able to measure out, measure out one ounce per 10 gallons. So I was able to actually pour that in and it made it, you know, I'll be honest, it was kind of concerning because when I poured in the last bit of it, it wasn't really mixed up well. And I threw it into my sword tail tank with a bunch of babies and the babies started going after the clumps of fenbendazole. So I was like, oh my God, I hope this is safe. <laughs> Like the fish are literally eating it. I'm like, oh God. <laughs> well, let's hope the internet's right on this one. <laughs> so mixed it all up and you can see this hydra all in there. And I don't have any babies in the in the shell dweller tank yet, but you know, still I was very concerned seeing this. And I makes it so I have to be more careful when I feed brine shrimp, especially in those two tanks that got it. Um the guppies, no problem. The endlers, I mean. My cobra handlers, no issues whatsoever. They loved it. They destroyed it. I was I, I looked up multiple places. There actually is, I guess, liquid goat dewormer that exists as well. That probably would be a little bit easier. But this costs about seven dollars a package. One gram does a hundred gallons. So you could potentially do three hundred gallons with one of these packages. So that's that's pretty good deal, you know, all things considered if it comes back. So I didn't get Hydra in any of the other tanks. I guess Endlers and Guppies are really good at killing the Hydra or actually eating the Hydra. Certain fish will actually eat the Hydra. The one word of warning for this is if you have Nerite snails, you might not want to mess with this. I have Bladder Pond snails and Ramhorn snails in with the Shell Dwellers. No issues. Didn't lose a single snail, I don't think. And this is the footage from today. You can see a big difference between what it used to look like and what it looks like now. It has been probably, by the second day, it looked like they were gone and they have not returned. I also cut back on the live feeding for now just to be safe and not have to worry about that. I'm going to probably start continuing to feed live food again, but I'm going to start using one of those like little pipette things and very strategically <laughs> feed only what they can eat. I've been kind of, I've just been getting a net and just dumping a bunch in there and Obviously, it's too much, which can lead to Hydra. So definitely a balance when it comes to things. You got to be careful on exactly how much you're actually feeding. When you overdo it on the brine shrimp, this is what happens. First time I ran into this was very concerning. And now the Skiffia tank, which has those rare Gadeids, they have no Hydra as well. And the babies were just born last night. So awesome feeling knowing that I protected them. The babies don't have to worry about anything, and I have to be extremely careful when I actually feed those two tanks in the future. And it's mainly because there isn't that many fish in there. I, the Gadea tank has two pairs of the Skiffia multipunctata, and then the Shell Dwellers, the Multis, there's eight of them in there, but they're very small fish. So I was just like leaving a cloud of a brine shrimp in there <laughs> like and they were going nuts for it i thought hey this is sweet but you know obviously when you have an abundance of food then you end up with this it's just crazy that they're that nature it you know they say nature will find a way it's like these freshwater anemones is insane it's just like what <laughs> so very big risk to fry like that's the biggest my biggest concern is fry and actually funny enough i've run into a couple things i've never seen recently in my 10 gallon orange sun-kissed neocardina sh shrimp tank a future breeding project of mine which i hope to have two additional new colors by the time spring comes spring summer next year I should have a lot more different color. I should have four colors available in, of Neo Caradina. But in that orange shrimp tank, I actually saw a dragonfly nymph the first time ever. And I was just like, what? Where did you come from? <laughs> and they can come on plants. They can come on anything. Those are definitely fry killers. Um, l luckily, I don't think it messed with the shrimp at all. But I ended up netting them out of there and getting rid of it and just like freaked me the heck out. I... I like dragonflies, but seeing them in the water like that, and it looks so, like, scorpion-like, oh, I I was like, ew, get rid of this thing now. So, it, it just goes to show you, I'm going to be coming out with a top 10, uh, you know, fish-keeping tips that I have, and one of them is definitely enjoying and looking at your tanks. 
I know, a, especially with people with multi-tank addiction, you can actually have so many tanks that you're not really taking the proper time to inspect your fish, inspect the tank, and it just goes to show you if you, I spend probably 30 minutes to an hour a day in my basement in looking at the other tanks closely just to make sure that the, you know, there's not a start of a parasite or an infection or something like that. So luckily I saw the dragonfly nymph and luckily I saw the hydro like in the very early stages of everything. So that is going to do it for the video guys. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that stuff. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Later.